Over time, corrosion can have a devastating effect upon iron. By taking chromium and adding it to iron, we create a corrosion-resistant alloy, stainless steel. The stainless steel family has many members with different characteristics. Chromium stainless steels are a common feature of our daily lives. Adding nickel allows stainless steels to be used in a wider variety of valuable applications. With the further addition of molybdenum, stainless steels become even more resistant to corrosion and can be used in the most demanding environments. Stainless steel unites iron and chromium together with nickel, molybdenum and other alloying elements. Welcome to C.1.5. Today we're going to explain how alloying can modify the properties of metals. In the introductory video you saw that we're really we are surrounded by alloys and we use them every day. And you should also know that really new alloys are being created all the time. And there's a lot of research going into this, including research that you can be part of. And some of those can be definitely part of sort of clean tech solutions. Uh, I've recently seen a really cool one where they've taken aluminum and they've managed to alloy it in such a way that it creates a non-stick material that's even more effective than Teflon and has less health effects. So really, really good, amazing stuff is going on. So let's th take a step back for a second and think about, well, if alloys are related to metals, what are metals, you know, what makes metals stick together? Well, metallic bonding is based on the metal cations, or their sort of their nucleus, um, in a sea of delocalized electrons. So all of their valence electrons in the metals become delocalized because really there's such a weak attraction between the valence electrons and the metal's nucleus. So this is what a pure metal ends up looking like. Metals form a very orderly lattice. So a lattice structure means it's very orderly. And also ionic compounds do this. Also covalent, giant covalent compounds create lattices. It's just sort of a network like this. And they're lined up in a way that really would allow them to slide over each other. Like really, when we do visualize a lot of these, these metals, you know, it's basically it's a perfect little pattern um, under the microscope. And so if we were to visualize here, basically adding a stress, like maybe pushing over here, um, what happens is, because of the way they're organized, they can just slide along. And you can sort of think of you know, that as really those delocalized electrons are kind of like a little bit of a lubricant, um, allowing those metal cations to just slide by each other. So the metallic bonds are not rigid like the covalent and ionic compounds we are familiar with. Um, so the sea of delocalized electrons makes it easier for the atoms to slide past each other like we saw there. So this is why metals are malleable and ductile and why, um, for example, the same is not true for an ionic compound because it doesn't have um, the delocalized electrons that allow it to slide by. Now over here, this is what happens when we create an alloy because some, you know, 
these metals, we don't always want them to be malleable or ductile. Uh, we kind of want sometimes more strength or more hardness. So we want to manipulate or modify the properties of those metals. So let's just take a look at what happens. So alloying disrupts the orderly lattice so that atoms have more difficulty sliding past each other. So here in a substitutional alloy, basically you're taking two atoms that have relatively the same size. And this is why atom size is actually important when you're designing alloys. And basically, if we sort of compare it back to over here, it's very easy to select, you know, a line of uh, metal cations and sort of move them around. But here, um, I'm not, it's very difficult to find just one set um, where they're going to slide past each other. So I can select that, but really, you know, as soon as this one starts moving, you know, it's going to start going down a little bit into here. And... Um, so really it just starts disrupting this orderly lattice and it just sort of like roadblocks you can kind of imagine it as or a squig sort of a, a windy road and the same thing happens here in the interstitial alloys and the interstitial alloys are like when you put carbon into say iron something that's much much smaller they fit sort of in between all of the atoms so again basically if you were trying to slide these over it's not going to work so well um, especially like for example an optic use my elliptical tool to maybe get a little bit closer but if you're gonna slide this atom over by applying some pressure to it it's gonna have to jump over this interstitial one so again it can't go in a straight line which makes it have different properties than this one so as you can see it results in different physical properties so it's harder less malleable and it's less tough or more brittle so it's more brittle because here you can sort of bend them uh, but here as soon as you start bending them it's the disrupted orderly lattice doesn't really allow for as much bending so it's more brittle it's more likely to shatter and it's less ductile and then we can also add on some chemical properties so for example for iron there's some corrosion resistance if we add the correct um, other atom like you saw in the video chromium is one of them. So that's basically the reason um, why modifying the properties of metals um, is done through alloying.